What about the trigonometric terms? Here I've got a graph of cosine and a graph of sine. And I want to figure out what's the derivative of sine and what's the derivative of cosine. Now in this video, I'm not going to go through the formal geometric proof of these derivatives, but I want to illustrate why my answers are going to be reasonable. So let's go and look at sine of x and try to take the derivative of sine first. And let me focus at the value of zero. So here is a tangent line to sine of x at the value of x equal to zero. And this tangent line, it looks like it's got this nice slope here of approximately one-ish. But then cosine has the value of one at zero. So in other words, it kind of looks like the tangent line of sine at zero and the function value of cosine are going to be the same thing. All right, let's step along. What about at this point? Okay, so, so now we've sort of flattened down a little bit. So if we were gonna say that the original slope was one, this is a little bit less than one here for sine. But I know what cosine of pi over four is. Cosine of pi over four, I could draw the standard triangle. It's one divided by root two, a number a little bit less than one. So the, the slope has gone down a little bit and the cosine has also gone down a little bit. Likewise at the top here. Okay, this one I can do easily. This is exactly horizontal. So in other words, the derivative of sine is zero at this value of pi over two, but cosine of pi over two is equal to zero. Final one here, the slope started at zero, but now as we go beyond pi over two, it's becoming negative. The slope is negative, but likewise, cosine, it goes down to zero and then becomes as negative as well. So what I'm sort of getting the sense of is the derivative of sine and the values of cosine seem to match a lot. So I'm gonna claim here that indeed, the derivative of sine is equal to cosine. And by the way, you could do the same kind of analysis to go for what happens with cosine, and you get the derivative of cosine is equal to negative the value of sine. For example, if I look at the derivative of cosine at zero, it's horizontal. This is the same thing as the value of minus sine of zero, it's minus zero, which is zero. Now that I have these two established, the sine and the cosine, I can do a whole bunch of the other derivatives of trigonometric functions. So how about we do this one? I'm gonna take the derivative of tangent of x. Now, tangent is sine divided by cosine. So in other words, what I'm saying is I want to do the derivative of sine of x divided out by cosine of x. And then this is a quotient of two functions, a sine divided out by the cosine, so I can use the quotient rule. So let's see if we can remember how that works. Okay, so first of all, it's the derivative of the top, so derivative of sine is cosine, multiplied by the bottom, so it was f prime g, so multiplied by cosine, so I'm actually gonna come up here and put a cos squared in, because it's cosine times cosine. Then I subtract, and what do I do? I put in the first thing, so that was going to be sine of x, so the f, no derivative there. And now I'm taking the derivative of the bottom. But the derivative of the bottom is derivative of cosine, derivative of cosine is minus sine. So there was a minus here, but I'm gonna turn it into a plus because I'm taking one more. And then it's minus sine, I've got another one here, so I'm gonna put it as sine squared of x. So that's the top. And then all of this, is gonna be divided by the denominator, the cosine squared. So all this divided by cosine squared of x. So in other words, we've got in a, a decent way, purely on our knowledge that tangent is defined to be sine over cosine, and then we apply the quotient rule. Now, there's one identity that's very important. Cos squared plus sine squared is equal to the value of one. So the cos squared plus sine squared, I can just replace this with one, and then it's one divided by cos squared of x. And one over cos is the definition of secant. So one over cos squared is the definition of secant squared. So this is gonna be equal to secant squared of x. And then I could go through if I wanted. I've done the derivative of tan and got secant squared. I could do derivative of cotangent, derivative of secant, the derivative of cosecant. All of these different things are fractions of the sines and the cosines. And so I could apply the quotient rule much the same way, use the same Pythagorean identity that cos squared plus sine squared is one, and I could get a bunch of results. The full list looks something like this. 
It's sort of long and complicated if this is the first time you've seen it. I'll, I'll let you know that in calculus, we're gonna be using these derivatives so often that you're basically gonna end up memorizing this particular chart just because you're gonna use them over and over and over again. But in truth, you only need to know the sine and cosine ones. And then all of the other ones, if you remember the definition, for example, that cotangent is cosine over sine, you just apply the quotient rule and you can get this formula on the test. But it's a good idea just to go ahead and memorize them just by practice and repetition of how many times we will use them.